Let's all go to the movies. Let's all go to the movies. Let's all go to the movies and have ourselves some fun. Let's go. All right, Friday morning, time to talk to Willie Waffle once again about movies and theaters for the weekend. Good morning, Willie. Well, good morning. I hope everybody's excited. Everybody's happy. It is Friday, you know. It is. Very exciting. And we have uh, a couple movies to talk about. Let's start out with uh, Eddie the Eagle here talking about new movies available this weekend. (laughs) Yeah, you know, in a movie I really wanted to like more than I did, and I feel like I'm in the minority here. You know, so it is inspired by the true story of Eddie the Eagle, which means they've changed everything except for his name. And so... You've got, yeah, it turns out Eddie the Eagle was a race car driver. Who knew? No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> Eddie, Eddie the Eagle is, is the story of the uh, the most unlikely Olympic athlete, a uh, young man played by Taron Egerton, uh, who is in the 1980s a uh, young downhill skier who dreams of going to the Olympics. It's been the thing he's wanted to do his entire life, but he just misses making the team. But he finds a loophole. Britain has never had or has not had a ski jumper in the Olympics in like, you know, 60 years. So he decides, hey, there's no competition. I'll make the Olympic team this way. And as you can imagine, there's a lot of mocking that's going to happen when, you know, he's never been a ski jumper ever in his entire life. (laughs) And, you know, the movie, it it tries to be kind of goofy and silly early on, and I think that's what hurts the film. You know, it messes up the tone. All the characters become too cartoonish, too crazy, too over the top, so that when it's time to get serious, it's hard to take them seriously. It's hard to believe that these are human beings in a way, and I think that hurts the film a lot. Also, Eddie's desire to be an Olympian, it doesn't seem to be driven by a good motivation. It seems to be driven by Kardashian motivations, delusion and narcissism. It's just like he wants to be on the Olympic team, to be on the Olympic team, not for anything good, not because he loves the sport, not because he loves the Olympics. He just wants to be an Olympian. And I think that hurts the film a great deal. I'm going to say one and a half waffles for Eddie the Eagle. Just in the promotion I've seen for the movie, I've... I've gotten kind of a confused vibe and i'm glad that i'm not the only one having you haven't seen it i was kind of wondering what the movie was supposed to be because part of it looked like kind of a fun you know a fun story about a about a person and a part of it looked like it was supposed to be kind of a a comedy act type of a thing kind of a a farcical movie and so i i'm I'm glad i wasn't the only one seeing that but it's unfortunate that it kind of got muddled the way that it did yeah i I think it really hurt the movie i I think if they if they made it just a a crazy lampoon it would have been funny if if they had made it a serious drama there's enough drama there to make it work yeah you know if they if they paid me to make all the movies they'd be better (laughs) right (laughs) there we go you got it moving on now to triple nine yeah you know a movie where you really want to take somebody you love to the film and make sure they drink a lot of caffeine so they can wake you up (laughs) wow it's not happening okay this is just one of those movies it just feels like they're trying to throw everything in here they're trying to throw in all sorts of stories for all sorts of actors and when you try to do everything you fail to do anything so you've got this story of casey affleck is this cop who's new to the force his partner played by anthony mackie is part of this secret gang that's that's robbing uh, this thieving and robbing all across town and they work for some crazy russian woman played by kate winslet and, uh, you know, they we're trying to figure out if they're going to get caught. And Woody Harrelson is like Casey Affleck's uncle. And he's also the investigator who's trying to capture his partner. But he doesn't know that he's trying to capture Casey Affleck's partner. You see where I'm going with this? Wow. Ooh. Yeah. It, there's just a whole lot of, lot of, lot of, but not really developing any of it. Not using any of it to make the movie intriguing. Not using any of it to make us care about the characters. Not using anything to raise the tension. It's just, you know, we threw everything in and hoped it would stick. And that's why Triple Nine just feels like a movie going through the motions. It's two action-packed type scenes wrapped around a bunch of boring garbage. Ouch. (laughs) So, yeah, that's that's one waffle. One waffle for Triple Nine. Movie buffs are just like the the pomp and circumstance that is the Oscars. That's coming up pretty soon as well. How about uh, how about some thoughts and predictions on that? Well, and you know, I'm with you. This is usually the time of the year where we're talking about the Oscars, the fun part of things, the exciting part of things. You know, the, the, the who's going to win, who's going to be silly, who's going to wear a crazy dress, and none of that matters this year. We're talking about 
controversy. We're talking about the nominees and the makeup and all that stuff. And I think it's truly taken away from some of the excitement of the Oscars. And I think, in the end, this is going to be the Oscars that's known as the controversial Oscars rather than about who won because the, the Academy is inviting it. The Academy, I don't know if you've seen this, you're, you're normally when you win an award, you get up and you start thanking your agent and your spouse and your brother and all these things. They're going to put those, that list of names on the screen. So really? now you're going to have 45 seconds to say whatever you want. Well, what do you think everyone's going to talk about this year? Right. Yeah. So now they've just invited this to just be an open, you know, open warfare, if you will, on on everything that's out there. And and I think that's gonna that's gonna that's gonna be what we remember these Oscars for. So do you think it's gonna change the trajectory of the ceremony and the tele the televised aspect of it for years in the future as well? You know, I don't know. Yeah, you know, one of the big things that I keep thinking about is. How do you make award shows better? How do you make them more interesting? Because, you know, we, we kind of, I think we've grown tired of them. I mean, just about every award show, you see the ratings kind of declining every year. And it, it, that's kind of the general, generally the way things are going with television as well. So you, you kind of have to wonder, what's it going to take to make these exciting again or make them something you want to watch again? <clears throat> Maybe the controversy is it. Maybe this year everyone's going to tune in because they want to see what Chris Rock says or they're hoping that Leonardo DiCaprio gives a big speech when he wins his, uh, his Oscar. I don't know. Okay. They need to get rid of the hose. You think so? Yeah. I think if it was just like back-to-back, like the presenters coming out, movie clips, whatever, because the hosts are just it just seems like they have to drag it out and it's not interesting and they just start blathering. It could be LL Cool J, and I'm gonna lose. I'm gonna lose, you know, interest after a while. And I love well, LL. I think, lot, I, I think you've got a point when the host <laughs> is timid, and when when the host is not, you know, saying something interesting, or is afraid to take on the subject, or is afraid to kind of mock the people in the crowd. Yeah. When they play it safe, they end up with really just horrible writing. Right. that nobody can relate to and nobody finds interesting. Yeah. You know, I, I think you know some of the best hosts, I think Steve Martin was a great host because he was willing to say whatever he wanted. Yeah. Something it's tells true. me Chris Rock's going to do a good job of, of uh, keeping people interested in that regard. Yeah, you know, or, or he may, you know what, he might just say, I'm never coming back. I'm going to do the show I always wanted to do. Right. Yep. And let I... it fly. <laughs> and I do love Chris Rock, so I forgot he's hosting, so that would be yeah. interesting to me. Well, we'll have to see what happens there. But in the meantime, what are we talking about next week when we chat, Willie? Next week we're going to talk about Zootopia. Zootopia. All right. Sounds good. Well, Willie, you have a great weekend, a good week. We'll chat with you again next Friday. All right. Talk to you next Friday.